Episode 5 of Hasbin Hotel, Dad Beat Dad, got us properly acquainted with the ruler of hell, Lucifer, while finally feeding us more breadcrumbs on who Alistair is and why he's really helping Charlie run the hotel. And if there was any doubt before, this episode should solidify that his appearance is definitely related to Lilith, given the beef between him and Lucifer. Why is Alistair working with Lilith? And why is Lucifer so afraid of facing the angels in heaven? This episode gave us quite a bit to chew on, so let's waste no time and dive right in. Though I will remind you that hitting the like and subscribe button is always appreciated if you enjoy the video. So we finally got to see Lucifer up close and personal, and I can't lie, while he's designed to be baby girl, the dude is a bum. Though he's on track to get his life together by the end of the episode. It's like I said two has been videos ago, if it's in the Helliverse, there's going to be mommy and daddy issues galore, and I won't lie to you guys, this episode hit close to home. I definitely saw a lot of my own relationship with my dad in Charlie and Lucifer, right down to the resolution. So honestly, I walked away from this episode feeling empathetic towards Lou, but I'm still gonna make fun of him. I'm just refacing this because I know the fans are gonna adore him, so I wanna make it clear that you shouldn't take any of this personally because I already am. I also want to make it clear that I like Lucifer. He's fun to watch and I want to see him improve as a father and a leader. I get this is someone who's been beaten down time and time again. I get he went through an extremely shitty series of events that stripped him of all of his confidence. I get that he didn't want to be in this position in the first place. But as someone who was in Charlie's shoes, I got some words. Charlie calls her dad as a last resort as she's desperate to get a meeting with Heaven due to the extermination drawing near, but the hotel is still not considered a success. Charlie even specifies that it's been five months, which, God, this show needed more episodes per season. I hate the state of TV. I'm cooking up another video about that soon, because eight episode seasons have become the bane of my existence. Lucifer is shown to still be locking himself up in his study all day, deep in depression. He still longs for his broken family as he's kept up photos of Charlie and Lilith, which is how we learn that Charlie evidently had an emo phase. Uh, that's actually hilarious. He's tinkering away at inventions that are clearly a far cry from the quality and innovation of his old creations. He's slaving away on things like rubber duckies that spit fire. Actually, that's not too bad. C could that be real merch? And could it spit actual fire? A24, please. You sold the rock from everything everywhere all at once. Make the ducky a lighter. I know you can do it. Thanks. Despite being the ruler of hell, Lucifer has no aura to him. No sauce at all. He truly might be the biggest has been. And the cherry on top is that he's the most frustrating kind of deadbeat dad. The kind who makes zero effort to reach out to his child, despite wanting to be involved with their life, making himself sound way busier than he actually is. As one of the seven deadly sins, the sin that he embodies is also his biggest flaw. His pride. His pride stops him from being the one to establish a connection with Charlie. It initially cost him his role in heaven, and it stops him from facing the angels in heaven to this very day. Given not only his behavior in this episode, but the fact he sent Charlie to meet with Adam in his place. He's too prideful to put himself in a vulnerable situation where he can be perceived as weak where he has to come to terms with his own mistakes, or where he could be humiliated because of those mistakes. Yet he doesn't do anything to justify that pride or get his shit together. There's a huge lack of initiative that stems from his past failures. He's just wallowing in his own misery. And that pity, prior to this episode, was a higher priority than self-improvement. Evident by the fact that he still wasn't paying attention to Charlie. He completely forgot about the hotel and doesn't have much faith in it despite her enthusiasm for it. So he doesn't bother giving it much thought. It's only when the daughter does the work for him and extends an olive branch by inviting him over that he finally leaves his quarters. And even then, he still doesn't believe in his daughter or her plan. He's just happy she wants something to do with him. The visit to the hotel doesn't provide rest and relaxation for Lucifer either, as there's clearly tension between him and Alistair from the moment he walks through the door. Bro did not want him to come anywhere near Charlie. Now let's not beat around the bush about this underlying tension. While this episode focuses on Lucifer and Alistair's rivalry as the better dad, it absolutely solidifies that Alistair is reporting to Lilith. 
if there were any doubts before. Let's lay everything out on the table. Lucifer and Lilith split. We can assume Lilith initiated the separation. Alistair and Lilith both go off the grid for seven years. Alistair shows up to the hotel immediately after Charlie calls her mom. Like, immediately after. Alistair instantly has a bone to pick with Lucifer as soon as they meet for the first time. Husk knows why Alistair went off the grid, and Husk knows that Alistair is indebted to somebody, claiming that if he's his pet, then Alistair is also on a leash, which Alistair does not like hearing at all. If he's the pet, there's very little room for speculation on who's the owner, given his actions thus far. It's Lilith! And while I don't think Alistair is in love with Lilith or anything, given that he's been stated to be aromantic and asexual, I do think his impression of Lucifer has been shaped by Lilith and their failed marriage. Alistair clearly has insight into the Morningstar family that we don't know about, though I do think he's fond enough of Charlie to dislike Lucifer just off the premise that he's been an absent father. Alistair's shown to be possessive of Charlie and claims he views her as a daughter, and if he was well aware that Lucifer wasn't around, it makes sense that he'd want to step up and fulfill that role. I don't think Alistair was boasting about how much he and Charlie have accomplished just to make Lucifer jealous either, given that he turned Mimsy away in order to keep the hotel safe. However, given his backstory, I can't say his motives are just to be a great dad. Charlie's a part of a much larger plan. Through our first real bit of Alistair lore, we learned that the radio demon showed up in hell out of nowhere and was regarded as a nobody. No one was taking the radio demon seriously and disregarded him as a serious threat, something he used to his advantage in order to move in silence until it was time to make a good first impression. Flying under the radar, Alistair was able to pick off major overlords of hell one by one, their screams echoing throughout hell thanks to his broadcast. He claimed their souls, which means he was making deals with them. And that in itself implies that whatever Alistair's power truly is, it must have held from somewhere beyond hell, offering something that even the elites can't get their hands on. But why was he doing all of this? What's the end goal here? If you ask me, I think Alistair was trying to change the hierarchy of hell for some reason, wanting to rise up and become the new ruler of hell. Maybe there's some noble cause behind that, or maybe he just craves power. So where do Lilith and Charlie come into play? Well, the prologue established that while Lucifer spiraled after being banished to hell, Lilith thrived as its queen. So from a business perspective, it makes way more sense for Alistair to go after the royalty who gets shit done, not the one shitting themselves and eating animal crackers. Judging by Husk, if Alistair owns your soul, then you're expected to bend to his every whim. Or else... <coughs> that. So if he owns the Queen of Hell's soul, then in theory, he'll be able to control all of its affairs through her orders, effectively turning Lilith into a puppet. But here's the thing, I think Lilith tricked him. How? I don't know. It could have been the terms of their deal, or it could have something to do with the fact that Lilith hails from the Garden of Eden. Either way, the first thing we learn about her in the series is that she hates subservience so it only makes sense that she dodged Alistair's con and made him the pawn. That Lilith owns Alistair's soul. So when Charlie called her mom in the pilot, Lilith sent Alistair in her absence, assigning him to keep an eye on her and ensure that her hotel is a success, even if he doesn't really believe in the cause. But since Lilith isn't around, Alistair is free to put his own plans into action, offering to make a deal with Charlie in the pilot. Alistair wants Charlie's soul in admiration so he can get rid of Lilith. After all, he doesn't actually answer Mimsy's question on if he cares about the hotel. He just needs it to thrive to please Charlie and Lilith. And that would explain why he was pissed when Lucifer showed up to the hotel. If he's in the picture and forms a strong bond with Charlie, like the end of this episode promises, then it might be harder for Alistair to keep Charlie under his thumb. Sorry, y'all. I know he's your Tumblr sexy man in a sea of Tumblr sexy men, but do not trust Alistair. We saw a display of his full power as he demolished Mimsy's ops for fucking with the hotel. What's stopping him from doing that to anyone who crosses him, let alone those he has a leash on like Husk? I don't know. I can already see them playing the long con of Alistair and have Charlie learn of his true intentions towards the end of the series. If Lilith herself doesn't end up being the final boss, which is entirely possible. And while we're talking about characters of secrets, let's switch gears over to Lucifer. 
I previously suggested that the opening of the series was deceiving us, as the story of how Lucifer and Lilith met spared a lot of details when it came to Lucifer's shortcomings. That his ideas during his time in heaven were actually causing more harm than good to creation, and that he intended to sabotage humanity by giving Eve free will, as payback for being excluded from heaven's council. On one hand, I think this episode supports the former, because let's be real, rubber duckies who could spit fire would end horribly in the hands of its target demographic. He also is vague in the second song, which is phenomenal by the way, broken sing, and I was moved to tears. But he was saying that his dreams were too hard to defend. But bro, what were these dreams in question? He's so vague about what happened with heaven, saying that they didn't listen to him that there are rules, and that they aren't open-minded. But can we get some details, my brother? On the other hand, however, I'll take the L on the idea that he sabotaged humanity, because it really seems like he didn't expect that free will would backfire so tremendously. Though it bums me out that he seems to have given up on his people entirely, thinking demons are a lost cause. I don't know if it's inner angel talking, but he's mimicking heaven's words to a T. It's sad because, in a twisted sense, this world is his greatest creation, yet he's turned his back on it. From my perspective, he hasn't tried once to make the best out of a city situation. He was just too beaten down to even consider a bright side, unlike his ex-wife. And to be fair to Lucifer, we do see that Lilith created a lot of distance between him and Charlie when Charlie was a kid, something else I can relate to. But because I can relate to it, I can't turn a blind eye to the fact that Lucifer still did nothing to connect with Charlie once Lilith was out of the picture. I do look forward to learning about why Lilith kept Charlie and Lucifer separated, but I have a hunch that might be something we dig into when Season 2 rolls around. The end of this episode also establishes that Lucifer has the ability to open portals, though his limits are currently unknown, and he has connections to people outside of Hell. Given that once he has his heartfelt song of Charlie and vows to be supportive and more involved, he helps her set up a meeting with Heaven. But who are these connections, and why do they still stay in touch with Lucifer? Are they angels who secretly believe in his cause, and still support him behind closed doors, even though he's lost his way? Because I imagine you usually wouldn't have that kind of pool when you're banned from somewhere. Overall though, this was a phenomenal episode. I really enjoyed watching Alistair and Lucifer have a dad off, and you can really see the pieces start to come together. Next up, Charlie and Vaggy are heading to hell where devastating secrets lie just around the corner. Stay tuned for our breakdown of episode 6. Until then, what did you think of Dad Beat Dad? Loved it? Hated it? Hate me? Let that aggression out in the comments below, and keep the conversation going over on Twitter and Insta at OstrichVox and at RoundtableVids. Check out Toon Drip for some dope cartoon-inspired merch, like the Curse of Feathers and Mud, and the Three Stars shirt. And if you enjoyed this video, please sort a like, and subscribe to the Roundtable for more great cartoon content. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have an awesome day. Peace!